This is our 13th reflection of our Table Talk series where we're going to take a deeper look at Mark chapter 8 verses 11 to 21. Um, I'm actually going to open that up a little bit um, further and, and start at the beginning of chapter 8 here because I think that there are three separate things happening here that we can glean so much and learn so much from in, in these moments. Um, as I was thinking about this to start um, and thinking about specifically um, verses 11 to 21 and, and you know thinking about like when we're sick or seriously ill or, or having an issue or ailment that you know we're suffering from and we are grateful for doctors and medicine and health care and we often run to them with like a quick solution I just I need an answer and I need it right now I I am grateful for when they do and we get excited when they do and yet what makes the most impact on us and on our lives it's not necessarily those people you know the doctor walks in checks in on you writes your prescription or whatever it is our course of action and sends you home or whatever and yet the person that makes the most impact truly is the one that stands by you, that sits by you, that sits with you through those things, holds your hands, offers you comfort, um, takes care of your daily needs. In fact, I enjoy watching medical shows, not that they're necessarily accurate, but you know, when they talk about someone needing a transplant, their support system is so, so, so vitally important to their recovery and to their life that that can either you know damage your chances or help your chances of, of receiving this miracle you know the surgeon can do the miracle of the heart transplant and yet if we don't have that support if we don't have those people with us walking us through these situations um, we may not be successful we may not fully recover and heal and I was thinking about this as I we, we are looking at these two parts of, of Jesus' interaction with some religious leaders here and, and then with his disciples and both of them just completely missing the point of what he was trying to do, what he was trying to communicate and, and who he was as um, a person here on earth, as, as God in the form of man. But I want to back up a little bit more. Because sometimes, yes, we can treat Jesus as this, you know, sign giver, as this immediate, you know, take care of what I need or whatever it is. Um, and yet he's calling us to something so much better. And, and while he is these things, he is a miracle worker, he is a sign giver, is not the point. Right before Jesus is tested and questioned in verse 11 by these religious leaders, um, he performs this incredible miracle of feeding 4,000 people, probably more because that's probably just counting the men, but um, with just a few loaves of bread, um, which would probably be more the size of a bun than an actual loaf of bread, and, and a couple of fish. And he performs this incredible miracle, but what happens and what inspires this miracle to me catches my attention. He had been with these people as they've been listening to him and he was teaching them for three days and he looked at them and had compassion on them. He saw that I can't just send them home now. They're going to faint on the way. These people were so fascinated by Jesus, so curious about who he was and what he had to say that they sacrificed those temporary needs and desires of even eating just to spend time with him and Jesus saw that and that pulled something out of him right that pulled this need for uh, the, this compassion for him to provide for their needs not just in introducing himself to them but this miracle then of feeding them because he was moved with compassion because he saw their hunger really to know and understand more about him and their curiosity about him and who he was and what he was saying and then as he gets ready to leave, these religious leaders come along and they test him. They come with this poor attitude of trying to prove him wrong. And they're like, hey, hey, perform a sign, perform a miracle. And Jesus sighs deeply here. That's what um, my translation here says. It's, he has this deep sigh of just like probably exhaustion, of grief, of just you're missing the point. You come here to test me, to trip me up. Or, you know, you only look to me as this, you know, miracle worker, this sign giver, and yet you're so missing the point of what I have to offer you. I have this everlasting peace, this everlasting um, truth to give to you of who I am and what this life is all about. And you're missing it by just looking for the signs, wonders, and miracles. And then Jesus, you know, he's, he's so disappointed 
by this interaction and gets into the boat and warns the disciples to be careful of um, these ideas that these religious leaders can bring in um, and their attitude towards him because that little bit of attitude can infect the whole thing and your whole relationship. And then the disciples get so distracted, I'm like, oh shoot, he just thinks we screwed up and you know, we didn't bring enough bread. And again, Jesus is like, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. Do you not remember what just happened? These people that were so hungry and so desired to know me and hear what I have to say, you know, they, they sacrificed so much and, and I provided their needs. I'm gonna take care of us. Don't worry about how much bread you brought, but hear the point of my message. Hear the point of the kingdom of God that there's so much more. And so I think that many of us can be found in these sort of three scenarios. The scenarios of the crowd, or the scenarios of the religious leaders, or the scenario of the disciples. And so I think we need to check ourselves in that. I don't know where you're at right now. If you're exploring faith, I think we should be encouraged by this piece of, of the crowds just sitting with Jesus, setting everything aside just to hear the truth of who Jesus was. And even later, you know, he talks to the disciples, who does everyone say that I am? These people in these crowds, they didn't fully get it. But just continue to sit, continue to ask questions, continue to listen to what God has to say, to what people in your life who know and have a relationship with the Lord have to say about who He is. Read the Bible and, and you know, search it out for, for answers as to who Jesus is and, and He's gonna provide the rest. You don't have to worry about it. Just keep seeking keep pushing and I think sometimes we can approach it in our exploration of faith in Jesus as the Pharisees of like okay sure if you're real if you're who you say you are show me a sign and yet we're totally missing the point when we're just looking for signs wonders and miracles we're missing the best part of having a relationship with Jesus of knowing who he is of sitting at his feet and listening to what he has to say and reveal about himself and who he is. And then I think even too, we can be caught, I for sure am guilty of being caught in the position of the disciples when Jesus is trying to teach me something, when he's trying to deepen my relationship and my faith with him, and instead I look at it as, oh shoot, I fell short over here, didn't I? Or I didn't do enough over here, did I? And he's going, Amy, you're missing the point. So wherever you're at right now today, I think we can really sit on this passage and listen to what Jesus has to say to us today about who he is and how maybe we need to repent or shift our thinking of who he is and just learn from him.